What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on some rear suspension on the Hilux. So I have decided I'm going to link this thing with coilovers. So I originally was going to leave the leaf springs on here, but I kind of want this thing on the ground. I'm not going to go super, super low, but I definitely want it lowered quite a bit. So I don't really like the look and the functionality of like a four inch block. So I have decided I'm going to do a wishbone three link because I was originally going to do four link. And I just decided I don't want to screw with having to move the tank, finding a new tank, rerouting everything. I think I'm just going to leave the stock tank in the stock spot and work my upper arm around that. So here's a look at what we got with stock. So I'm going to be probably cutting this bar. I'm going to leave this section in. I might tie that into the new cross member for the upper arm, but this is what we got. So like I said, I want to leave the stock tank in the stock spot. I don't want to move it. I don't want to reroute everything. So we're going to leave that there. I'm going to pull the leaves out. I'm going to throw the axle on some jack stands, kind of get it up maybe four or five inches, somewhere close to where my ride height would be with being lowered. So I want to get the axle up and then I can kind of figure out what I'm doing for uh, link bars. Honestly, looking at this right now, I was going to throw link bars on the inside of the frame. The gas sink's in the way for that. I have to go either on the outside, which there's not enough room here, or on the bottom. So being that we got to run on the bottom, I may use this factory mount. I haven't quite decided yet. I, I almost wanted a little bit longer bars, but then if we come up farther, we are just dropping the mount down farther. You can see this mount is kind of where the frame comes up. So the mount's a lot higher. I don't want the mount hanging way down. So honestly, I may use these factory mounts for the rear. That's gonna save a lot of time. Like I said, we're gonna do like a wishbone style upper link. So it's gonna have two mounting points on one side and then one mounting point on the other. Let's get this frame drop, get the axle kind of where it's supposed to be. And I can get a little better visual on kind of what we're looking at and figure out a game plan, get some parts and start cutting this thing up. Well, I got most everything figured out on what I need for materials. Nobody in town has what I need or it is way too expensive. So I guess I'm gonna bolt up the axle again to the leaves. Also, another thing we need to do is at least set a motor and tranny in this thing with the drive line so I can figure out the uh, drive line angle or the pinion angle. So we can do that. I wanna drop the tank out and clean that. I wanna pull the brake line. So we got some stuff to do in the meantime while we're waiting for our parts. I ordered everything online so who knows how long it's gonna take, hopefully not too long. Guys, I am back. It's been about two weeks since I ordered all my stuff and I finally got everything I need. With everything screwed up right now, I ordered all my stuff and lo and behold, it was all back ordered and they couldn't get it. So I had to cancel my order, go somewhere else and find all this stuff from like four different websites. But we got everything we need to tackle this suspension. So let's check it out and let's get to work on this thing finally. So this is what we got. I got inch and a half quarter wall, probably a little excessive, but for the link bars and then some two inch with eighth wall for, I uh, got to build a cross member and then well, cross member for the back for the shocks or the, the coilovers. And then I'm gonna have to do some sort of a cross member up front for the top link. So we got that and then all of our bushings and everything's in here. So we got the little bungs. These are like the weld on uh, studs that we can weld onto there to have some adjustability. And we got all the bushings, everything in here. Got a bunch of link tabs. We got some QA1 coilovers. Let's open these up. First thing I wanna do is get the springs on the coilovers and get these mounted up and then we can start cutting this thing apart.
All right, we got this thing dropped down. I dropped it about five and a half inches and that is with no weight on it. So this thing should be pretty low as long as I can get the front low enough. But good thing if we do have to adjust these, we can crank these things up and lift it up a little bit more. So I just wanted to be able to go low enough. So I wanna build everything around kind of five and a half to six inches of drop. And then, like I said, we can raise it up if need be. But one thing I'm going to start with is this lower mount. So this mount here is gonna be the lower link bar and then the shock or the coilover is gonna mount on the back just like that. And I kind of had to cut it out like that so you can see it clears the coil over and I might need to space it. If, if I do need like a quarter inch spacer, not a big deal. Well guys, we got our extra extravagant lower mounts built. So I don't know, I kind of went all out and spent way too much time building these, but they turned out sweet and they turned out extremely strong. Next thing we need to do to make room for those new mounts is we gotta pull the axle and cut that perch off. And then I'm gonna pull these leaves out. We got to kind of mess with this front mount a little bit because there's kind of a big hole right here. Plus that is about a quarter inch too wide. So I'm gonna do a quarter inch plate on the inside of that mount and then fill in this hole, weld the plate in there and that'll be good to go. All right guys, got a motor and tranny in. That's actually my new 22R block. I got that back from the machine shop, but I wanted to get all the drivetrain in so I can kind of set my uh, pinion angle and driveline angle. So right now, I got this set up pretty close to where it's gonna be. But the front joint is at about two degrees angle. So you kind of want to match that with the back. So I got it about two degrees and you want them to be parallel. So if that one's pointed down, you want that to be pointed down as well, kind of in the same plane. So that's kind of what we got right now. So once we get that perfect, we'll get our new mounts on the back, get those tacked in place, and then we can build our lower link arms.
All right, guys, progress has been made since last time I talked to you. So we got the upper arm done. That turned out amazing. I actually went and bought a tube bender or a pipe bender just because I needed to bend that one. And I'm sure I'll use it in the future and I kind of need one anyway. So we got everything tacked together. Nothing is fully welded. If you guys are looking at this front brace and saying that's much too weak, I am going to plate this whole thing and kind of guss it down into the frame on the ends just to tie that in better. I'm also going to run another support bar from here down to that plate there. And that is going to be, I think that'll be plenty strong enough for, you know, what this truck is. Also, we got the rear cross member for the coilovers kind of set up, got that tacked in place. We got these pieces built up, cap the ends. So these are going to go well like that and then I'll have tabs going up to the shock or the coil over there. So we are good to go. One thing I'm going to do real quick before we do anything else is cycle through this suspension. And with everything tacked right now, if we break a tack, then we know we need some adjustments. But everything I think is really, really straight. So let's cycle through this suspension, see if everything works and see if we don't break any tacks loose. We are good to go guys. I went up and down a few times and nothing broke. Everything seems like it's moving really free. I also had, I also put my uh, little angle finder on the axle and going from all the way down here on the bump stops to probably, I don't know, eight inches up, I only changed about a half of a degree in angle. So that is very good. What I have read is you want to keep the bars parallel with each other. So you can see, I set these things up absolutely perfectly parallel. So I think that's probably why I don't get much pinion angle change. So that is good. A couple more things to do. We gotta finish up the rear, like I said, add another support into here, support that hole or brace this whole front mount. And then we can pull everything off and fully weld. Also, what I may do, I may put another crossbar in here, or at least a gusset, I'm not sure exactly. I kind of want a crossbar or something in the upper arm though, just for a little bit more strength. All right guys, we are back together 100% and we are sitting on its own weight. So you can see the uh, coilovers here. So they are right about sitting on the bump stop. So definitely gonna have to trim those. Also, if we do need to raise it, like I said, these are adjustable. They're all the way down. There's no spring pressure at all on those springs. So we can definitely raise it. But I did make these upper mounts just about as high as I can make them without hitting the bed. So we are probably about as low as we're gonna ever get unless we drop that mount down more. But I think once we get the cab on, get the bed on, I think this is gonna be plenty, plenty low. I think with riding on the bump stops, it was about six or six and a half inches, which once we get weight on here, it's gonna be even lower. So I definitely think it'll be low enough. We gotta button up a few more things. I wanna cap the end of that tube. 
And then I want to basically box in the whole front of this main support here, just because it's kind of crucial having this tied to the frame, just because all these mounts kind of run into this one. So I'm gonna get some 3 16 plate, plate down into here, kind of gussy into the frame on the ends. You can see I did run this down and I'm gonna weld that to the frame there. So that's definitely gonna help out with strength as well. All right, we got these arms all fully welded in. We are good to go other than one issue we had. I forgot to pull this stud out of this insert when I welded it and it pretty much locked itself in place. I did get it out. It did mess up the stud, but luckily the insert still looks actually pretty good. I did buy a tap. I'm gonna tap that out. I did buy another insert as well as this whole end piece, but just a little tip for you guys. Make sure you pull these out and even when you do, I pulled these ones out and the threads are still, they still distort a little bit. So you probably should run a tap through it. You don't wanna lock these things in there because that is what happens when you do. It completely destroys the threads. So what I'm gonna do for now while I wait for my new parts is I'm just gonna cut the crappy threads off of there, thread it in just so I can put everything back together on the truck. Make sure this upper arm didn't warp at all and that's one reason I haven't fully welded in these tabs yet. Just because if that arm did distort at all and we need to move something, now is gonna be the time that we actually move these tabs and make it work.
So there it is guys, we are finally done with the suspension. So we are all fully welded, 100%, looking good, working good. You can see jumping on it, works pretty good. Nothing seems to be binding up and we got clearance everywhere. Now I did raise up my shock mounts just a little bit. I will have to trim the underside of the bed. There's a little rail or a couple little support rails that run across the bed. I'll have to trim out just a little bit for where those shocks sit, but other than that, we are looking good. We are good to go. Well guys, that is a wrap for the three link on the back of this thing. We still gotta figure out what we're doing with the front. QA1 does make a few different coilover options. So we're gonna have to do a little testing on that and find something that will work for the front. But before we do that, I'm gonna strip this frame completely down and drop it off. I'm actually gonna have this thing sandblasted. So one of my buddies works at a steel shop and he said he'll blast it for a hundred bucks. So I'm not gonna pass up on that deal. Sandblasting is really the best way to go about this rust. So that is gonna help out tremendously. Then I can just go through epoxy it and then throw on a nice chassis black paint. So as far as the three link goes, I've never done a three link, a four link, any sort of link suspension at all. I've never done it. I just did my research, kind of figure out how to do it and I made it work. It did take a lot longer than I thought it would. I'm probably about a week or a week and a half into building it, but at the end of the day, it turned out awesome. I am very, very happy with how it turned out. The only other thing we gotta do is just wait for that threaded piece for the bushing to get in, and then we can fix that, weld that up, and this thing will be 100%. But like I said, now we gotta strip it down to the frame, 100% bare frame, and drop this thing off for sandblasting. Well, that is a wrap for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.